Hey everybody, it's Eric with the Portland Sessions here. And I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes of kind of how we do the streaming side of things. We've been streaming these sessions for quite a while now, and we were looking for a platform that was really easy to bring in artists and bring in guests to be able to have a little conversation at the beginning, hand the stream over to them to let them run through their songs, and then hop back on and have a little conversation again at the end. And we tried a bunch of different ones, but we landed on Restream.io. It was a great platform that was one, able to stream out to services that I've never even heard of before. But it was also nice because it was all in one with their studio setup. And we'll kind of go over that here in, in just a second. But we wanted something where we can just kind of have an all in one platform. We didn't have to handle or go through, you know, OBS or Streamlabs or one of those, then put it through Restream and then have that go out. We wanted that one all, the one stop shopping kind of concept. Um, and Restream was perfect for that. So let's hop into the computer. And I'm going to kind of show you the rundown of everything that we do from basically start to finish of setting up a stream. And then we're actually going to be doing our live stream. So this is exactly what I'm going to be doing before we go live here in about an hour. Now, a little disclaimer before we jump in here, this is a sponsored video. Now we'd only do sponsored videos with people that we are using and believe in. So it's kind of a win-win situation to partner up with them because it's something that we would be wanting to do anyway. So showing you this little behind the scenes, it's kind of a no brainer. Plus we could ask a lot. How are you doing this? What's working? What's not working? And we don't we can say whatever we want to. And later on, you'll kind of see the one thing I would love developers to look at. Otherwise, this platform is amazing. So we'll just jump in. You can see here we've already set up our YouTube, Facebook, Periscope slash Twitter and Twitch. And the nice thing is, you know, we always like to schedule our streams ahead of time, have good thumbnails and those kind of things. So you can kind of go in and when you're editing, you can pick which scheduled stream you want to do. So today we're doing Holland Circus, but here's some few of the other ones we have upcoming. Now, if you were just logging in, this would be all blank and you would just go up to add a channel and you can scroll through all the different options that you have, many of which I've never heard of, but that's okay. Maybe we'll start branching out into some of these other platforms. And I know that they're working on Instagram. It's not set up natively yet. So hopefully, the second that comes in, you'll see Instagram pop up here, which I know we are all very, very excited to be able to stream natively in to Instagram. But you set up here, set yours up. Like I said, we already have ours set up. You can toggle on and off where you want to stream from. If for some reason you're doing a specific stream to just two or three channels, you don't want to do it to everything. Maybe you are kind of a social media admin for some of these. And so you have a bunch set up for different companies that you work with. You can just kind of go in here and select the ones that you want to stream to at that particular time. So live studio is kind of like the main thing that we're like, this is what we want. Cause as you can see, it's just there. Once you get everything set up there in destinations, boom, you're right here, you're live or you're not live, but you're ready to go live all within this. So we'll kind of do a quick little run through of here. This is pretty consistent across most streaming platforms. So if you're kind of familiar with that, if you're here watching this, you probably have a general idea of how this stuff works but it's a little different. So it's good to have a little quick little rundown. Twitch API not responding, try again later. Maybe we will not be doing Twitch today. We'll see how that kind of goes. Um, the beauty of live streaming is things go as planned and sometimes not quite as planned. That's okay. But if you need to change anything, you can do that. If you want to you know, add a different title, as you can see, we have ours already pre put in there to pop up when our stream goes live. But if you hadn't done this yet, ahead of time, you can go in here and put in your titles, the descriptions, and it'll update everything that you have checked, which is great. Graphics is awesome because you can really kind of customize the look. If you have overlays, you know, gamers that have overlays that have little boxes in different spots, you can kind of set this up. We have a simple overlay that we'll kind of use right before we go live. And that's just usually the cover that we're using, you know, mainly for YouTube. So we'll put that up there and usually it's good. You know, what we use it for is we'll put that up there we're kind of behind it as you know, if you click away, you can kind of see that, that I'm still there. And if we had a guest next to me, it'd still be there, but we kind of leave that up there so that we can kind of go live, look over at this kind of monitoring computer, make sure, okay, we're like legit live on Facebook, on YouTube, where we want to be. And then we can come back in here, click away. And then we're there, we're live, we're ready to go. Captions, you can pop in there with, very similar to kind of like an overlay. So we have our setup for today for Howlin' Circus, put a hashtag, you know, put the obligatory follows on social media and all your handles and chat. Chat is awesome to be able to have chat in here. 
because you pull in the chat from everywhere that you're streaming. So if we're streaming to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever we're streaming to, it's all gonna populate right over here. Obviously we're not live, so we don't have any actual chat. So Restream is good at giving you a little, little placeholder to give you an idea for these demo purposes. And you know, for what we're doing, we don't really pop chats up on the screen live, but if you're doing kind of like a question answer or something where you wanna put everybody's actual live chat on screen, you just click on it, show it, and boom, you got that chat. Integrate it into one thing. You don't have to have OBS open or Streamlabs open, then Restream open, and then YouTube open for the chat. You don't have to have all those different things. It's all just right here. Now, I talked about like the main reason that we chose Restream was because of the ease of being able to add guests in here. And for our purposes, music guests. The one thing that if you are doing any kind of music related streaming and you're using pretty much any of these platforms, they all have a built-in audio processing, which is great for cutting out background noise if you don't have headphones and, 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 not, and cutting out that like echo loop that you kind of hear yourself and it kind of comes back in that weird feedback loop that just sounds horrible. We've all heard on Zoom calls, it's miserable. Audio processing is perfect for that. So if you're doing just talking and two people talking, make sure that that is checked. If you're doing anything when it's music related, you wanna make sure that you uncheck right here, this audio processing. If you uncheck it, then whatever's coming in is going out. There's nothing happening to it. It will require a pair of headphones because it's not gonna cancel out any of that, that echoing where you can hear yourself, but it's gonna make music sound amazing because it's not trying to find that dominant sound and cancel out something. If you were lucky enough to get a cam link before they just disappeared everywhere and became four or $500 on eBay, you can select whatever camera you have kind of plugged in. I'm just using my, my webcam for this purposes. Even for the stream, I just use my MacBook's webcam. And then of course I got my camera up here, which is not connected because I was not lucky. I did not purchase the cam link and was not gonna shell out $400 for cam link. That's beside the point. As soon as they're back in stock, this all will look a lot better. Now, I mentioned the main thing that we use Restream for is being able to bring in those guests. And that is super easy. And I'll show you like exactly how to do that here in a few minutes when we actually bring in our artists for the session that we're doing today. This is where I'm setting all this up for an actual session that we're gonna be going live with here in a few minutes, which I realize when you're watching this video, that session will have already happened, but you can go back in YouTube time and watch the session and see what I did. Is that how it works? It's not quite Inception, but pretty close, I think. So you just grab this link here, cut and paste it, send it out to anybody. They don't have to download anything. It just opens up just like this in their browser. They select their mic, they select their camera, and you're good to go, that's it. Now, Restream developers, if you guys are watching this, my one wish list item is this right here. Right now, when you are, if you're in this window and you send this out, you're, you're fine. But if you have any issue, like we saw, you know, we weren't kind of connected to Twitch. So if I need to come out here, go back to destinations, if you come out here and make any tweaks or any changes here, or you forgot your stream key, you need to grab your stream key and put it back in. The second you go back in to Live Studio, it generates a new link here. So developers of Restream, that's the one thing that I would love to add to the wish list is the ability to make sure that this link right there is kind of consistent across the board. I'm sure you are inundated with tons and tons of requests of things that people want to have built in here, but that's, I want to add my name to the list and I want to add this to your list of things that we would love to have is that kind of consistent. Otherwise, we are loving Restream. It is amazing that the fact that you can just do everything in one spot, it's stable, it works great. I, we just love it. Quality is good, it's awesome. So I hope this was valuable. Like I said, the basic rundown of all of this is very similar to pretty much any streaming software you might be using but the guest feature, some of those extra graphics features, the ability to stream to things that I have never heard of is amazing. So I hope you found this a little bit valuable. And if you enjoyed this little behind the scenes rundown, go ahead and click that link below and check out Restream, give it a try. They have a free version. Um, as with everything, there's a free version with watermarks on it, but it works great. So you can kind of check out to see what it's like. Um, if you kind of like the behind the scenes rundown of the Portland sessions, please consider hopping over to the Portland sessions and subscribing and hitting the bell notification for the different sessions that we have coming up. So you can kind of see what it looks like on that end of things. Now I'm gonna go do all the other behind the scenes stuff of taking pictures and thumbnails and making sure the descriptions are correct and making sure we repost the replays and all that kind of fun stuff. 
So with that, I will see you guys next time.